How you doing? Heights, uh, praise and worship service here at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. My name is Jeff Hampton, and it's very good to be with you all uh, today. I would like to invite all of our members and guests to please complete your Connect cards. Uh, they are, uh, you simply detach it from your bulletin. It lets us know that uh, you're here today, and you can take advantage of the opportunities that are listed. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the presence of your spirit descending upon us. Bless us now as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Please stand as you're able and join me in our call to worship that will be up on the screen. You are the salt of the earth. May you season the world with faithfulness, O oh God. You are the light of the world. You are a city built on a hill. May your vigor make us bold witnesses, O Spirit of the only living God. Thank you. Good morning. We're excited to have you guys in worship. We're going to try something a little different today. Um, you know, a lot of churches and contemporary services will clap when they sing. No pressure. So don't call the pastor and say, I don't like clapping. But some people have voiced that they do. So if you want to clap to our faster songs, you are more than welcome to do so. We're told throughout the Bible to clap our hands as an offering to God. Uh, Psalm 98 tells us even the rivers clap their joyous praises unto the Lord. So that's what we're going to do here today. So please join in as we welcome in our awesome God. Jesus, let your kingdom come here. Let your will be done here in us. Jesus, there is no one greater. You alone are Savior. Show the world your love. King of heaven, come down. Come now, let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come, and King of heaven, rise up, who can stand against us, you are strong to save, in your mighty name, King of heaven, come, we Children of your mercy, rescued for your glory, we cry, Jesus, set our hearts toward you, that every eye would see you, lifted high, King of heaven, come down, and King of heaven, come
the poor and powerless and all the lost and lonely and all the thieves will come confess and know that you are holy will know that you who are content and all who feel unworthy and all who heard with nothing left will know that you are whole Turn to those around you and give them a hug or a handshake with the peace of Christ.
all the boys and girls to come join me this morning for our children's message up on the side of the stage here. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to sit crisscross and look at you guys so I can see you. Good morning. How are you boys? All boys up here this morning. How are y'all this morning? Are you good? I'm so glad you guys are here. I am excited about today. Today is the first Sunday of August. That's pretty exciting, I guess. But it's the first Sunday of a new sermon series at our church called World Class Christians. So I have a question for you guys. Does anybody know what World Class event started on Friday? Anybody know what started on Friday? What started on Friday? The Olympics started on Friday. And the Olympics is basically a gathering of those world-class athletes, right? So let me ask you a question. Do you think just anybody can go to the Olympics? Do you think I could grab three of my best mommy girlfriends and we could show up in Rio and say, hey, we want to compete in the beach volleyball. We're here. We'd like to, we're, we're, we're going to win it. We're, we're here. Do you think they'd let us do it? Probably not. They probably would not let us compete in the Olympics. So what do you think it might take to compete in the Olympics? If there was something you wanted to compete in the Olympics, what do you think it might take? Maybe to be a world champion. What else, what, might it, what would it take to be a world champion? What do you think you'd need to do? Practice, what else might we do? Practice, more, pra lots of practice for sure. What else might we do? We might eat right. We might, do you think we might have a coach? Do you think we might have somebody who's maybe an expert teaching us and, and showing us? Okay, how about instruction or maybe grit? Do you think everyone that gets to the Olympics has only won? Probably not. Do you think they've lost a lot? Probably have. They've probably lost more than most people, but they kept trying and kept winning. They kind of had some grit. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, once you get to the Olympics, does everybody win? Does everybody get a gold medal? No, not everyone gets a gold medal. So everyone, you have world-class athletes, they're all there competing. Only one person gets the gold, but they're all there. So today, Pastor Hampton is going to share with us a little bit about agony and victories of being a world-class Christian, or losing and winning as world-class Christians. So thinking about the world-class athletes, and we're about to be studying for the next bit of weeks, world-class Christians, what do you think it might take to be a world-class Christian? What are some things we can learn from those athletes that are competing in Rio right now as we speak? What were some of the things we mentioned? What were some of the words? We mentioned practicing. So being a Christian is really just someone who believes in Jesus and his teachings, right? So if we were going to be a world-class Christian, what might we do? We might have some share, yes. That's kind of practicing loving others. That's a good one. Pray. That's right. Talking to God, letting him be our coach. That's exactly right. He is our coach. What else might, what could we learn from these athletes? So we, we're going to practice loving others and sharing. We're going to let him be our coach. What else? What is this book behind you all? The Bible. The Bible. We could get some instruction from the Bible. What else? You got something else? Love others. Yes, so that's what we're going to be learning about in, in the next mini Sunday. So I hope you guys will come back, and let's listen today to see what Reverend Hampton can teach us about being a world-class Christian. Do you think you guys could pray with me this morning? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, please be our heavenly coach and help us all to be world-class believers in you and lovers of your people and of your teachings. Amen. And I have a little something I want you guys to take home with you this week. I want everyone to grab one of these. And I want you to stick it someplace to remind your family and yourselves. You can just grab one and pass it. It has a WCC for World Class Christian. And I want us to think about that this week and as we go out and try to love others and share and allow God to be our coach and go to his word for instruction. Let's pass the basket. Thank you, boys. Everyone can go back to their seats now. Once again, as you're able, please stand to your feet and worship with us.
this time if our ushers would come forward we'll collect our morning offering Father God, we thank you so much for your presence here, and we thank you, Lord, that there is joy for the morning, and there is no sorrow or sickness that heaven can't heal. We thank you for your hand, Father, but I pray today you would find a people that would, before we would seek your hand, God, we would first seek your face and your heart, that we would be the arms that reach around the world, that we would offer your healing to those around us. We give you all of our praise and all of our worship today, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would at this time, please stand for the reading of Scripture.
today's scripture reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. But we have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we are not knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Dismissed from drama school with a note that read, Wasting her time, she's too shy to put her best foot forward. Turned down by the Decca Recording Company who said, We don't like their sound and guitar music is on the way out. A failed soldier, farmer, and real estate agent. At 38 years old, he went to work for his father as a handyman. Cut from the high school basketball team, he went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. The teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything, and he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and had no original ideas. His fiance died, he failed in business twice, he had a nervous breakdown, and he was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never lived. Let us pray. Eternal God, your grace is truly amazing. Help us to run our race with patience. In his name we pray, amen. It is good to be here with you all today. And uh, it's good to have my, 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 uh, my oldest daughter with me today, Joya. We don't get to worship together too much anymore. You know, they grow up and you know she's in school in Atlanta, but it's good to have her here this morning. And my uh, the the, uh, the 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 youngest will be here Friday, so we're feeling pretty good to have uh, Pat Pat little feet running around the house. She's gonna kill me for saying that, but, <laughs> but it's it's good to have the family together. Uh, today I will uh, briefly talk about agony and victory, how a person handles and works through failure. It's very important. In the video that was just shown, Lucille Ball was dismissed from drama school for being shy. And the Beatles were told their sound was not good. And General Grant was a failed farmer, real estate, and handyman. And Michael Jordan was once cut from a basketball team. And Thomas Edison was told that uh, he was stupid. And Walt Disney was told that he had no imagination, and Abraham Lincoln failed in business twice, had a nervous breakdown, and lost eight elections. Most of you know that the 2016 Summer Olympic Games are underway. It was a beautiful opening, and it brought back wonderful memories of days when I ran cross country and track. I had dreams of participating in the Olympic trials of 1980, 1980 games. That's correct. <laughs> no, you can't believe that. 36 years ago and 80 pounds ago, <laughs> I once had a brief dream of going to the Olympics, but I failed at making this dream come true. And I can t you all can tell you more about that story later, but I had some good times at one time, and folk talked to me about that, but I, I, didn't, I, I didn't make it. Maybe you have experienced 
the failure of one or more of your hopes and dreams. When we experience perceived failure, it causes us to ask questions like why, why, why? And the answer normally is we just really don't know why. The Apostle Paul experienced failure after failure, but he came through every failure feeling victorious. The Apostle Paul claimed to be an apostle appointed by Jesus on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, to be an apostle to the Gentiles, making him the 14th apostle. The early leaders in the church chose Matthias to replace Judas after his betrayal, and thus Matthias was the 13th apostle and Paul was the 14th apostle. From the life of the Apostle Paul, we can learn three helpful lessons about failure. First, failure is common for most people to experience at one time or another in our lives. Secondly, God is interested in how we respond to our perceived failure. And lastly, failure has the potential to push us towards higher heavenly goals. And so we can learn much from Paul's life experiences with failure. Failure is common to everyone. Number one, at various stages of our lives, we all experience this. You might think about some that you have had. Some failures are out of our control. When we try something that does not work out, we can choose to stop trying or to continue on and try something else. Mark chapter 6, verses 4 through 6 tells us that even Jesus experienced failure from a human point of view on earth. Mark 6 says, then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. Jesus experienced human failure. The apostle Paul experienced one failure after another. Second Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 24 says, this is Paul, he says to us, five times I have received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked for a night and a day. I was adrift at sea on frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. And besides other things, I am under daily pressure because of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made to stumble? And I am not indignant. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weaknesses. After all that the Apostle Paul went through, you wonder why he just didn't give up 
on his calling. Paul even had a, a physical infirmity that he called his thorn in the flesh. He prayed for God's healing, but the infirmity remained. He accepted the weakness as from the Lord. Philippians 4.13 says, he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. A common factor for people that learn how to deal with failure and hardships in life is that they do not give up. They refuse to focus on their weaknesses and failures. Instead, they focus on the positive and their strengths. Michael Jordan did a basketball commercial where he walks into the arena and the people are chanting, Michael, Michael, Michael. And he says to them, he says, I have missed 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been entrusted to take the game winning shot and I have missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. Then he says, that's why I succeed. Michael Jordan didn't focus on his failures. He focused on his strengths. The Apostle Paul could testify as stated in our text today, which was just read by my wife, Cynthia. He says, but we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. The message of salvation in Jesus Christ has been entrusted by God to frail and fallible human beings, jars of clay. Paul's focus, however, was not on the perishable container, the jar of clay or our bodies, but on its priceless contents, which is God's power dwelling inside of us. Though we're weak, God uses us to spread the good news and God gives us power to do God's work and God uses these frail clay jars to make our world a better place to live. Secondly, God is interested in how we respond to failure. What we normally call failure, God may call a window of opportunity. For 33 years, Jesus was preparing for the cross. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and humanity. Jesus was spit upon, beaten, suffered pain, and was crucified on a cross. He responded by saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The Apostle Paul started on a dusty, lonely road on the way to Damascus. Jesus spoke to him, called him to a new mission in life. Saul was transformed into Paul, and he never turned back or turned his back on God. The Apostle Paul, like most of us, faced failure at different times in his life, but he was prepared, and he responded with renewed faith in the Lord. Then lastly, failure has the potential to push us towards higher heavenly goals. Paul stated in Philippians 3, 13, 14, Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. 
Paul is saying, I'm leaving the past in the past. I'm moving on to my future, whatever that future may be. The apostle Paul could say, in my weakness, God is glorified. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Paul lived in the light of eternity, and he could see failures from God's perspective being strengths. In Christ, we have this promise. I will never leave you or forsake you. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, you have the promise, I will be with you always. Towards the end of Paul's life, he was in Rome under house arrest. Paul knew he was about to face death for his commitment to Christ. Paul knew about all the letters he had written to the church that we enjoy today. And Paul says to his son Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, As for me, Timothy, I'm already being poured out as a libation. And the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul loved the games. Now on, from now on, there's reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, but not only to me, Timothy, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. How we handle failure is critical to our life today and in the future. Failure is a blessing if it pushes us to humble ourselves before the Lord and, and begin to live in the light of eternity. From the life of the Apostle Paul, we can learn three helpful lessons. Failure is common to everyone. God is interested in how we respond to our failure, and failure has the potential to push us toward heavenly goals. And when experiencing failure or change, we praise God for the glory of failure, our agony and victory, a time for God to guide and transform us. Now, <clears throat> I've really had to explain this to my children, but I'll just sum it up like this with you all. I did not make it to the Olympic trials in 1980 for several reasons. But I love the Olympic Games, and I have been running for the Lord every day. Glory to God. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy, holy, holy. of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes. In the name of the Lord. In the name It is Jesus Christ in whom your word became flesh and came to dwell among us. Through Jesus, suffering and death, you destroyed the power of sin and death. You raised from the dead the same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting his death, Jesus took bread, Gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, our Lord Jesus took the cup. 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that in unity we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your table forever through Christ with Christ in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty God now and forever with the confidence of children of God let us pray together the Lord's Prayer our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen at this time, I invite those who are serving to come forward. Today we will receive communion by intention. You simply receive the bread and lightly dip it in the cup. It's most appropriate to say thanks be to God or amen. And everybody's welcome, members and non-members who have an open communion table. Come and enjoy the feast that has been prepared for you.
On the back of your bulletin, you'll find several uh, announcements uh, that we hope that you'll take advantage of this week. But um, here in New Heights, we need ushers, greeters, and tech assistants uh, in the booth. We hope that you all take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, the music, uh, summer music and arts camp I hear is wonderful. Cancer Friends luncheon will be this week and back to worship <clears throat> services are next week. And uh, women's fall retreat. Many opportunities here that we hope that you will uh, take advantage of. Go forth now uh, from this sanctuary, uh, running uh, your race with patience. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. King of heaven, come down. King of heaven, come down.